Hello YouTube, it's Atlanta to Dallas Aviation coming to you with a uh, 1 200 scale unboxing today. Um, sorry it's been a little while, uh, I've been a little bit busy and uh, but I uh, had a little bit of time today to um, at least get to the 200 scale model that I have recently acquired. Um, now you'll recognize it. Um, it's it's a Gemini Jets, of course, and Gemini Jets actually released this exact same model in 400 scale, which you can see in uh, my last uh, 400 scale unboxing. Uh, so we'll we're going to take a look at the 200 scale version of it uh, and and discuss it a little bit. Um, so with that, uh, go ahead and bring in the box. Uh, as y'all know, uh, I do single tape uh, videos, so uh, I got to do this pretty quickly. So I have already taken the model out of the box. So is it an unboxing? Well, you know what? Maybe I should just start calling it uh, model reveal instead of unboxing because you because you rarely ever actually see me taking it out of the shipping box or in the packaging box. Um, but if I can remember, maybe I'll just start calling it a reveal uh, now. Um, all right, so here it is. Gemini 200. The uh, Delta Classic Widget on a 757-200. Um, and this one, um, this model does not, even though the box has the Sky Team logo on it, uh, this is also the most current uh, logo for Delta, even though the model itself is in classic widget livery. Um, and I don't think I noticed this on the 400, but uh, evidently this is a version of the livery before they started putting the Sky Team logo on it. So this, anyway, okay. Now I do believe, if I'm correct, um, Sky Team did exist, but it was a little while before they, they had an actual Sky Team logo and put the Sky Team logo on, uh, on the aircraft of the participating carriers. Uh, but anyway, so uh, something interesting I noticed about the box. So it, on the surface, it looks like a, just the normal box, right? Um, it looks like the normal Gemini Jets 200 box. Um, oh, and by the way, uh, this item number, since I always point that out, is a uh, Golf 2 Delta Alpha Lima one two six three right there but anyway so what I um, what I had noticed is um, I, I'm sure other uh, youtubers have already pointed this out but first of all they changed this to a um, uh, what is this velcro so it's a velcro shut in Honestly, that's probably it's probably cheaper to do it that way versus what used to be. It used to be a button flap, uh, and then I think even some of the other ones even had like a a magnetic flap. But this one is just a Velcro flap. So there's the first thing that's kind of new to this. Uh, the second thing new to this, which I also think uh, someone has already pointed out, was that they've created now a, a, a see-through thing. So it, it's, you know, you can open the flap and you can look, sort of see the model inside where before the model was inside two pieces of foam and you... And even though you could see the top of the foam when you flipped the lid, you couldn't really see the airplane until you took that first part off. So that has changed. And so you have the view inside. Um, you also have, 
the inside flap I think this was the same anyway but the inside flap has some information there um, but it's not it, it actually doesn't seem to have as much information as the 400 scale uh, box does but of course the 400 scale box uh, this printing is much smaller so but anyway so there's part of, of what makes the box different the other part that makes the box different is is the packaging I hope you can see this I, I, I can't see it very well on the little bitty screen that I have but as you can see it's it it almost kind of looks like um, it almost kind of looks like um, the how the wide body one 400 scale for NG models used to look so you have the piece of you have the piece of foam underneath that actually holds the the model in place um, along with the stand would be over here and the uh, um, the either extended um, wheel uh, gear or the uh, gear doors if you wanted to display it uh, as if it was in flight is in there and then it just has a seaf through a uh, plastic covering on it which is why you can see uh, through the box and kind of see the model even though it's still pretty um, it's pretty protected in here and you can't see it really well but you can see the model better through the box than you used to be able to so that's that seems to be different all right so now I'm going to I'm going to bring the model in. I'm going to, I'm going to put the box back up here. Uh, I still don't have a uh, um, still don't have a uh, power for my turntable. Uh, the model fits on the turntable, and that would be great. But uh, I don't have any any power for it right now. Um, so I'm going to bring the box in, and we're going to do this the way we used to with a 360. But we're going to bring the model in now. I put I have already put the gear in um, so this is gear down we're gonna look at it gear down and we're gonna take a look at it um, a little bit closer too so I'm just gonna do a 360 here now the extra information I usually give you on on these models I've actually already given you for the 400 version uh, but I'll just reread those. Oh, my background just fell over. Hopefully, you're getting a good look at this. So now we're on the starboard side. Now I don't really give give scores, um, but I will have to say that um, while some of Gemini Jet's um, 400 scale molds are a little bit out of date and need to be improved uh, They've done a pretty good job on making sure that their 200 scale um, offerings are uh, Way more accurate and uh, And look good as far as the mold is concerned now this um, now This is very lightweight so uh, it makes me think that it's probably, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's not as light as I thought it was, but um, I don't think that these are completely solid. Um, but anyway, but that is, uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, so the extra uh, information I wanted to give here, so... Um, we have we have our registration here is uh, November six zero seven Delta Lima and this is the same 
uh, aircraft that they put out in 400 scale. Um, this aircraft was delivered to Delta Airlines on uh, the 14th of May, 1985 uh, and, and would be approximately 39 years old since its first flight, but since then it has been scrapped. Um, uh, Delta's uh, 757s were powered by, or are powered by, uh, two Pratt and Whitney 2037s, um, and then you know what model number since then I don't know. That's just the in general uh, for that. And uh, and as of this particular uh, livery, uh, seating configuration was probably 24 domestic first class and 159 economy. So there's some of the extra information. Uh, now what I do like, we'll get um, what I do like and that I probably pointed out that I wasn't happy about on the 400 scale. What I didn't like on the 400 scale was that the widget on the tail was not quite uh, proportioned correctly. Um, this looks more correct to me. Um, the spacing of the white that's in between the blue part of the widget and the red part of the widget uh, seems to be um, in the proper scale uh, separating the two. So they did that better uh, on the 200 scale. Um, another thing we already kind of talked about the mold itself. Um, the engines look their 757 engines look much better on 200 uh, than they do on the uh, 400 scale. Uh, what they didn't do, and they kind of had this problem on the 400 scale one, look at this cockpit. Look at these cockpit windows. Oh my goodness, what what's happening here it's just this part of the cockpit window here is placed way too far up you can probably I mean I can even kind of see it on the itty bitty tiny screen there is kind of a gap where the nose starts to slope and where the cockpit windows are supposed to come down to this is supposed to be this is supposed to be flat. There, this isn't supposed to be angling down like this to the side. This, the top part of the windows are supposed to be straight, basically straight across, all the way across. Um, so, and of course on the bigger scale, this is even more obvious than it is on the 400 scale. Um, but they, they, they did not get the cockpit windows right on either scale, or at least on the unit that I received. So um, I'm a little bit disappointed there, um, but it still it still looks really nice, and uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say that 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 alone makes it not worth it or feel like I got ripped off. Um, but anyway, we'll do a little sweep back here. You got your, uh, sorry, L1 and L2 door there. L1's got the, the widget on it, L2, where they usually board. And uh, the Delta titles there that are written basically above uh, first domestic first class. We already kind of looked at the engine. Uh, you got your two overwing exits. And very, very nice details. Um, there's a close-up of your registration, American flag, uh, Boeing 757 there right in the back. Um, and if I didn't mention it in the other video, um, when these were actually delivered, the, uh, the cheat line actually went all the way to the rear of the aircraft. 
Um, so this would be a, it's already been in for a check and to be uh, repainted. And that's when they decided uh, they weren't going to extend that cheat line all the way to the APU in the back. And then we got our beautiful widget on the tail uh, with Delta in white uh, in the ship number on the top of the tail. All right. And just before, just before I leave, I want to emphasize the uh, cockpit windows again. So we, we saw how it looked on the model itself. However, the art on the box Look, look at the art on the box. That is how it's supposed to look and it did not look like that. You can see that the top of the cockpit windows are basically straight across. and uh, But on the model, they angle down from the parts in the center angle down. And that's just not what it's supposed to be. Um, you can see that uh, on this final window here how the bottom of it angles up well on the model itself that part of that part of the window is actually straight and it is not supposed to be straight uh, so so to use a southern phrase uh, the cockpit windows are all cattywampus uh, so that's that's unfortunate, but like I said, it looks good. And honestly, if um, as long as as uh, NG now that they have a 200 scale uh, 757, if they put this out in Classic Widget and it's not this aircraft number, I will buy another one because uh, I'm sure that they will probably not get the printing wrong and their mold is likely at least as good as this one is. Uh, so I will get it if, if they put out a classic widget uh, with a different uh, registration number. Uh, even if they do, even if they put out the same registration number, but the cheat line is like delivery cheat line where it goes back to the back, I, I'm not gonna get that. Um, the the only way I'll get another one is if the registration is different. Anyway, so that will do it. Um, that will do it for this uh, one two hundred scale um, reveal. I'm, I, I'm going to try to stay away from saying unboxing now because the way I do it is more like a reveal. Um, uh, so if you enjoyed this video, uh, please consider leaving a like and maybe sharing it. Uh, if you have any uh, comments you would like to make about the model, uh, maybe you got it and you feel the same way or your unit uh, had the cockpit windows kind of messed up too, um, or if you have anything that you would like to say about the model, please leave, your, uh, leave a comment. I would love to read uh, your opinion. And um, if you're enjoying uh, additional uh, content on my channel, please consider uh, subscribing too. Um, so with that said, um, we will take it out with a view of of the 1200 scale classic Delta widget livery 757-200 from Gemini 200. And so until next time, happy collecting.